Hey everybody, welcome back. So I thought before I went any further, I would just pop in and show you some of the things I've done because I've made some changes since the last video that I had not intended to make. And one of those changes was I had originally thought the wiring from the hot end and the wiring from the bed down here, I originally thought the stock wiring was going to be long enough. And I had a little bit of a accident kind of stupid mistake I damaged the um, small 24 volt out connector on the SKR mainboard and as I was waiting for Amazon to send me a box of replacement ends I um, I walked away from it for a couple days and I changed my mind about that wiring so when I got back and I repaired the the mainboard and I'll show that to you here in a moment I decided that I was going to lengthen those those um, wires coming down from the hot end and from the bed and I wound up lengthening them all 14 about 14 inches and I didn't just splice into the middle I went ahead and I made I made longer ones with the correct since I had that set of connectors from from Amazon and they're only about seven eight bucks I went ahead and I made the ends and that um if you decide to do that get the proper tool to crimp those open barrel connectors because if you don't have it you'll never get them made and even if you have it if you've never done it before and I have done it for larger gauge wires and um, it's kind of an art form getting the feel to crimping those but once you do it's not tough and if you want me to I'll make a a quick video giving you an idea how to do it but you do need the right tool so I came back and I lengthened See if you can see it down here. I lengthened all the wires and I encased them in this nice, this nice 3 8 inch accordion plastic wire loom to kind of get them all to be the same length. And um, and of course they're never going to all be the same length unless you modify the, those ribbon cables yourself. And I'm quite not yet ready to to go there. Also, I did get a longer ribbon cable for the LCD. You'll see it's now long enough to go up on top of the enclosure where I want it. And that ribbon cable came with one end that was that needed to be reversed. And I don't have the tool to shorten ribbon cables and recrimp them. So I just filed down the locating slot on the on the end of the pin itself, the raised portion of it, and I flipped it around. The very worst I can do is plug it in wrong. And since I've already done that, no harm came to it. I'm not too worried about accidentally occasionally plugging it in wrong. And um, I'm going to take a break now and pause this video and I'm going to pop the cover off of my little box there and I'm going to give you an idea of what I did wrong and how I fixed it and a couple other ideas. Be right back. Okay, got the cover popped off of the control board box and hope you're able to see this. If you come down in here and look, this little 24 volt right here let me get on there this one right here I damaged the pins in it I felt like an idiot uh, it wasn't the end of the world but um, it made me step back from this for a couple days while I waited for the replacement connectors to arrive and you'll see unlike the ones next to it it's got a white plastic base against the, the main board the others are black and I have a little bit of hot glue down just to make sure that when I go to unplug it, it doesn't pull the plastic base up off the pins. Um, and that was all the only thing I did wrong, but you'll see that unless you're going to shorten some of these wires, you're always going to have some that are slightly too long and some that are slightly, well, not too short. You're going to bring, you're going to bring the shorter ones in long enough to reach and you know give you a comfortable little bit of extra. And the ones that are going to be too long are just you're just going to have to find room for the excess that or you're going to have to shorten them now these meter long cables are more than long enough if you had the correct tool to crimp the end back on to go ahead and um, and do that but even if I do that later I don't want to do it now because I'm thinking later on down the road that I may replace this box with something different it really doesn't have a lot of room for anything else and one of the problems are these 24 volt blower motors they're crap the the sound original I think it was called at Amazon is a better one and I have had a couple one of those one I wrecked and the other one is over 
on the other Ender 3 on the Pets Fan Cooler. So I may have to get another one of those or a couple more of those. I think they come in two packs. They're like five bucks each. But at some point in time, I may put a, um, I may go to a bigger control box where I can put a buck converter in it and have a 12 volt supply for fans where I can get some fans better to my liking than some of these some of these 24 volt fans we're stuck with. I know there are better 24 volt fans but I'm just not seeing what I like so adding a two or three dollar buck converter to the inside of this box would be a piece of cake. You just have to have the room to do it. I also don't really want like running these fans at their full speed. They're loud and they seem to have a pretty short lifespan. So I can't find any way in Marlin to control this pin. It seems like it's full 24 volts all the time. There is no PWM you know, controller there to, to drop that fan speed down. So I have a 100 ohm resistor in line with the wiring. I know some of you won't like that. It runs about 30, 35 C above ambient. Hottest temperature I could get, was, the room was about 28. C and I was um, getting about 65, 68 C out of it. So it's going to be in. It's going to be in the airflow stream. So I'm not too concerned about it. And if it dies, it dies. And um, like I say, I may be replacing this. But so far, I'm pretty happy with the way all the wires run. I've got it tucked into this slot because this is going to, for right now, going to be mounted underneath of this along with the power supply. And when I showed you this, one of the reasons I paused because I wanted to get the power supply unplugged. Because I can't tell you how many times I've knocked that off of there and drugged the whole thing off. And I, after the third time, I decided I wasn't going to fool with it anymore with it plugged in. So probably should have figured that out after the first time, but I didn't. So I think that's it for now. That is the changes I've made from the last video. I am going to get the power supply and the control box mounted underneath and then I'm going to get the rest of the enclosure put on. The rest of the enclosure except for the side and front panels are finished. So when I get it put on, I am going to get the, um, and you'll see it's, it's over here. It's been my, it's been my workbench for the past, the past week or so. I'm going to get it put up and on there. I'm going to get a, a filament spool holder and I'm going to figure out how I'm going to mount the LCD up there. And um, I'll come back and I'll show you that and then we'll start working on these side panels. Hope you guys have a great day and a very good week and I will catch you next time. Bye for now.